Welcome back, Chris Garlock, Michael Redman. Uh, with I believe is this uh, is this really game thirty, Michael? I think so, right? Yeah, we're in game thirty, about halfway through now. Exactly halfway through. I'm not very good at math, but sixty <laughs> divided by two is probably <laughs> thirty. Uh, and and we have uh, not only a brand new player, but Stephen tells me this was his only game. Yes, uh, Tang Wei Xing, Nine Don. Um, he's in his early twenties at the time. He was born in 1993, and he's a three three time world champion. Um, I think two of them came before this game. So at the time, he maybe had only two world championships. Mm. All right. Let's, uh, and let's he was playing the, the mini Chinese and stuff like that at the time, when he had black, that is. So he was he was a player who liked the Chinese-style openings. And that was something that sort of went out of fad after AlphaGo. Mm -hmm. But in this game, he's going to try uh, this Kakari. It looks like maybe he's thinking of trying... Uh, Kobayashi style Seki maybe, like if White plays here, an option would be to play here. Mm. And this is the way we, we would play it at the time. Um, I have some fun memories of this opening. I like to play it. Um, nowadays, you would see people play a big Shimari after playing that Kakari. So the big Shimari is just so much more popular. But in this game, White played the Kakari against that. And this is something um, that a lot of computer pro uh, programs will, will choose to play this Kakari. And in fact, when black plays the double Kakari, you often, quite often see white pressing immediately and giving black a low position there on the side. Mm. I think we saw a game, uh, uh, I, I forget the player. We'll, we'll, we'll get to a game where something like this happens, actually. Mm -hmm. In this game, white uh, plays the attachment. Uh, just the fact that computer programs um, seem pretty um, okay with the idea of allowing black to get the, the double Kakari in this lower left corner position, whereas humans thought that this was going to be good for black, usually. So that's something that we has changed, and the way we continue with this Joseki has changed. So here black plays the attachment. This has become the most popular move. Jumping the 3-3 three, three point. Jumping into the 3-3 three, three point is bad, um, and we were, already knew that it was bad, actually. So this is supposed to be bad. Black does have the option of extending here, which is a Joseki that is not played so much recently, but it's something that could be played. It's something that I think is still viable, but it's just right now the attachment here is so much more popular. And as we see, it was already being played by human players. So this is where um, Tang Weixing played, and AlphaGo covers on the 3-3 three, three point. So at this point, this is a point where black has a number of choices. Actually, this game is sort of unusual because, and well, it's not unusual in the fact that AlphaGo gets a big lead pretty quickly, um, but it gets really exciting after that. So uh -huh. actually, I'm gonna be getting most interested in the variations after AlphaGo already has a lead. Um, at this point in the game, let's see, what move are we at? Oh, sorry, jumped ahead. It's still move 14. Still, it's pretty even at this point. Black's various choices would be, actually, this is the, the most calm move. Um, it will allow white to give black a, a very low position on, on the lower side. So black might hesitate to have so many stones on the third line here. Another move, uh, I think this one is probably a quick, quick on, but this move is the most common move, maybe. This is the move that probably I would choose, because if white follows with pressing here, then at least one of these black stones is on the fourth line. So it's not as low as before. Mm -hmm. And there's also the fact that black is threatening to push through and cut here at some point. So there is a bit of a threat there. So this could happen. Um, otherwise, yeah, I think I like this move best. And white might answer it uh, with, as I showed, with this move. Or yeah. white locally could be playing. White could even start with a pincer here, which makes it very sharp. Uh, white has to be careful here with the connection, too. So white would be playing something like this. Or sometimes something like this. It gets pretty sharp. It, 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 it's an exciting variation. Or white can cool things down a little bit by playing here and making me eye up the left side 
um, some, a pincer somewhere around here or a pincer somewhere around here. So this would be the relatively calm way of playing. Instead of that, black just extended on the left side. It turns out that this was not as important as the lower side. And actually, I remember in a game I did for AGA, um, a video commentary I did for you on the AGA YouTube side, I remember that I made a similar uh, mistake in my game against, there was a game against uh, Cho Wu in which I made a, a similar mistake, I think, in which, oh, I, no, I'm sorry, it was against Kudo Norio. That, that was just last year in which I overestimated the value of this extension towards the side. And so it was the same mistake, basically. And white pincers on the lower side. When white pincers here, white already has a slight advantage. And Karago gives uh, black 47% winning percentage and about five points. And we have to start with the context that in the, at the start of the game, with six and a half point Komi, Katago is giving black a pretty good uh, winning percentage, something like 53%. So when it's gone down to 47%, that means it's um, something like 6% difference. Um, six or seven points, I think. But just if looking at the position. Excuse me? Uh, just looking at the position here, you know, as a, as a quick snapshot, you know, mm -hmm. white white on the bottom here uh, mm -hmm. looks really efficient and light, uh, and, and black has that one position on the left that, that looks a little stingy now, doesn't it? it looks a little, a little, I mean, it's a finished position, granted, yeah. but it's, 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 a finished it's position. it feels very tight, right? I think the point that I would make is that if black plays uh, a calm move like this, Black just cannot really afford to give this to white. It would be too efficient. And I think quite often something that I focus on when I'm going through the computer analysis is that it turns out that a wasted stone like this, this black stone that's inside white's territory, where the outside white stones are, are in pretty natural places, and it's just this one black stone that is inside there and it's not doing anything. When you have a wasted stone like this, Whatever theories you might have about controlling the rest of the board, it's, it's going to be bad. It usually gives you a bad score. And yeah. that really makes it makes sense, too. So I think that's the story here. The fact that Black cannot afford to do that means that Black is forced to, to escape here and start a fight in an area where White seems to have a slight advantage. It's like, um, it, it seems that White has potential to attack in the local position. The number of stones is quite similar, so it's not that. But when black plays here, black is threatening to, to cut here. So white answered that. At this point, uh, this it, it was very subtle, but white gained a few more percentage points. Um, I, I saw Katago was suggesting that this would be better, and it is better if white ends up playing here anyway. And the point is that this move Although it's a simple connection, it's actually a fairly, um, it's a fairly effective move when white cuts here later. So white can, for instance, uh, let's just give a random black move. When white cuts here, with that liberty filled, black cannot capture from above. Uh, black would just lose the three stones. So when white cuts there, white gets to take this outside black stone in a net, in a geta, which means nice. that white has a very nice shape there moving out into the center plus the fact that white can squeeze again with this move. It's very pleasurable for white. So the connection here or here is a fairly effective move. So if we assume that white's gonna play there, then maybe it was a bit better for black to have this stone here. It would be no forcing moves left for white. It's just a very subtle difference, but it's a little bit better for black to have it here. So that difference seems to have given white two, two or three extra percentage points. Um, it was sort of hard to understand, but that, that's the story. So when the game black extends here, this is where it gets really, really difficult for black because um, actually, um, well, it's difficult anyway. If white, if white extends here, that just gives white a nice position on the lower side. I sort of like that for black too. I mean, I, I like this for white. This might have been better in that black has a very safe shape on the outside here, so it's a nice shape. But still, the overall position is okay for white. So something like this would follow. 
but when you compare it to the game, you're going to see a lot of trouble for black in this general area. And so this would have been the just adding that one stone there at this point would have uh, cooled down the basic area, the, the general area, the lower left, and it would have given black that opportunity to surround white a little bit. And white is forced to, to make a living shape, so then black would be able to move back to the lower right corner. So this is supposed to be slightly better. It's a difference that's, I would probably choose this way also, just like the human player did. So this is, this is a move that you sort of grab out to. It's, it's such a nice point because it's an extension for both sides. But we're gonna see how, how much trouble black gets into because black extends here. And now black plays here. This is gonna turn into an opportunity for AlphaGo to so, show us some technique. <laughs> <laughs> so just to start with what Black should have done, Black should have simply ex jumped here, right. and White is going to play this cut like I was showing before, and White's going to get this in the... It's, it's good for White, but it's still something like um, in the vicinity of 44%, 45% for Black, so it's... it's Black's going to win by a few points before Komi. So it's, it's still... Um, if we ignore Komi, Black still has a slight advantage. We can't really ignore Komi, but it, it's a lot better than some of the games we've seen. When Black plays here, Black is trying to indirectly save these Black stones, and provided they can escape unscathed, they're going to be okay. So AlphaGo is going to use some technique uh, to set up an attack here. So starting with this, this is a pretty standard sequence in the lower right corner. Now White plays here. So what do you think White is trying to do? Well, I mean, White clearly wants to play in the, you know, G7, G, I mean, some sort of cappy surrounding mm -hmm. move, yeah. but doesn't want to do it directly. So I guess because that... It, basically, if White caps immediately... Yeah, I, I should demonstrate that. If White caps immediately, Black can connect up here. And right. it's going to be relatively difficult for White to attack, right. attack that. Right, but so, so, so white starts with this. White's going to add some strength. Yeah, so it's a, it's a strange looking move, isn't it? But white is taking a liberty here. Right. If black just answers underneath, what white is going to do is white is going to cut once. So this is something that, at this point, maybe it starts to make sense because white can cut here, and then just get one extra forcing move from outside, like this. And, uh, of course, the computer program has white playing away now. But that's the fact um, that white gets this extra extra stone. Basically, white has gained one stone on the outside there, putting that much more pressure on black. This is already very satisfactory for white. And you can see that the fact that black added that stone here, um, although black added that stone, Black is being forced to add another stone. So Black has a slightly over-concentrated shape here on the left side. So that extra efficiency for White is, is the difference here. In the game, Black, Black didn't want to submissively allow that to happen. So Black counterattacked. This is where it really gets bad. Wow. Wow. And now... Uh, like if black plays here, the idea still is to play here, and this would be bad. Like if black pushes through, let's have black push through. Something like this. This is going to be trouble on 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 this side. It's trouble on all sides. It's trouble like on even all if, sides. Even if white white can always play here at any point, that that would be trouble for black. But even if white extends here, you can see there's this forcing move here, and it's going to be very difficult for black to save those stones on the lower side. So you can see how it's going to sort of rebound and attack the black group on the lower side. If black just captures the one stone, white is getting some extra forcing moves. Like it's going to, it's gradually getting difficult for black to escape there. And this is, this looks a bit ugly for black. It's just black's getting chased all over the place. So you can see when black tries to play more strongly here, with this move, it actually made it even worse for Black because now White's got even more momentum when this happens. It's going to 
add to White's attack on Black's group on the lower side. So Black tries to deal with that, um, tries to deal with that by taking from above. It's gonna it's gonna get worse and worse. So White plays one capping move, and then goes down here. Plays here. White's setting something up, some technique here. So White plays this far, and finally curls around. So this was an exquisite. I'm order wondering piece. about that. Yeah, I would have got the order wrong. Yeah. And it, it's working so This is something that um, was so beautiful. Obviously, the people watching the game could see this. Um, it's demonstrating the strongest variation for white. And at this point, black just does something different. But if black had played here, um, white would then pull back here, threatening to capture black on the lower side. Black is forced to capture this white stone, which sort of backfires towards the left side. So this is what white's plan is. And of course, white can play this forcing move at any point. So white's completely alive. White has broken through black at this in this area. Black's connection is completely severed. And when you sort of split through a, a narrow area like this, white is doing damage to black on both sides, basically. So it's a very effective way for white to be breaking through. And you know, it just gets worse from here. Let, let's just show the game variation where black eventually sacrificed those stones there. But white's getting territory on, on all sides, basically. And black just barely living. And then white uh, has sent it. White has the initiative to play away. Wow, that was brutal. So black's just sort of uh, skin and bones here. And white yeah. got all the territory on the left side of the board. Man, this is what happens when you really tangle it up with AlphaGo. Just no mercy. No mercy. <laughs> I, Yes, yes, it's just the calculating skill. Wow, and this is not a weak player. This is this is somebody yeah. who knows his way around the go board. But it's a, man, yeah, it's a world champion. It's slicey dicey, but you know, kudos for trying some different stuff. So I, that's all right. So <laughs> good one, thank you, Michael. Thanks so much for watching, folks, and we will see you next game. Take care.